Today's class is inviting the breath, but we do that in every class, so today is no exception, but there is a subtle um, mindfulness to the movement um, which uh, would invite the breath. So start by standing and just lifting your toes and then placing your toes deliberately down to support your posture. It's an awareness. Lift and roll your shoulders. Turn your head to the left as you breathe in and to the right as you breathe out. In to the left and out to the right. In to the left and out to the right. And then raising both arms up to the ceiling Clasp and reverse the palms up, stretch up, press your feet into the ground and laterally just go slightly to the left, either static to stay or bounce in and out, breathing in come to the centre and breathing out go to the other side just bouncing slightly or static, your choice, come to the centre. Breathing out turn subtly to the left. Breathing in, come to the centre, and breathing out, turn subtly to the right, come to the centre. And then lower your arms to shoulder height. Breathing out, turn your head to the left. Breathing in, come to the centre, and breathing out, turn your head to the right. Breathing in, come to the centre and lower your hands back down alongside you as you lift and roll your shoulders. Clasp your hands behind you and aim the knuckles to the floor. And then breathing in, just lift the hands away from your bottom. And then breathing out, relax your hands back down again. And then separate your hands lift and roll your shoulders and then breathing in raise the right hand breathe out turn your head to the left breathe in bring your head to the center and breathe out lower your right hand and breathing in raise your left hand breathe out turn your head to the right Breathe in, bring the head to centre and breathe out, lower your left hand back down alongside you. Lift and roll your shoulders. Come to step your feet hip width apart as we sway gently from side to side. You can lift the heels, it becomes a balancing exercises, you balance the pelvis, the swaying connects into all five energies of the body and they, those energies are said to pervade the mind as well, so it's a very, very releasing movement. And then come slow, you're swaying down and come to stand still. Lift and roll your shoulders and just circle your wrists as you move your hands upwards, stretching your fingers. Circle as you come downwards. Open your fingers, stretching them out and then just relax them or you can carry on to curl them in depending on what feels good for you and stretch them out again and either just relax them or intentionally curl them in and then lift and roll your shoulders. Bring your hands to the centre and then we come to come to a seated position on the mat. Cross-legged.
And the invitation to read the breath here is holding your hands either on your knees, up or down, is to just tuck your chin to the chest. It just lengthens the back of the neck. Your spine grows tall. And just take a few breaths, chin to chest. And then very gently bring your chin upwards. Lightly touch your hands to either side of you. And take your right hand, make a figure of eight to bring your hand up and over. And then make a figure of eight as you bring your hand back down, which way you make your eights up to you. And then the left hand make a figure of eight as you swirl it up breathing out lean over to the right side breathing in come upwards and then figure of eight as you snake your hand back and again figure of eight on the right side as you bring the arm up Your right arm goes over to the left as you slide perhaps your left arm out along the mat. Breathing in, slide upwards and then figure of eight as you bring your hand back down. And then again in your left arm, figure of eight as you snake your arm up. Bring your left arm over your head, your right arm slides out to the side. Breathing in, come to upright, and then snake the arm back. I just wanted to pick up on that. When you raise your arm and simplifying it, if you just bring your elbow in to the midline to bring it out, if you've got a stiff shoulder, it's much more um, fluid movement. And I think I mentioned bring the elbow in to the midline and then to bring it back again. And we can do the same on the other side, left arm. Elbow comes into the midline and then just snake it up right. And then again, snake the arm into the midline as you snake it back. So that's a much softer movement on um, the limb. You'll find the same it's in in dance principles, not that I'm an expert, but it's um, and also in the um, minimal injury within the choreography of, of dance schools, that they very much look to bring the limb inward towards the centre, but circumvents any problems of the joint, in this case the shoulder, but the same with the legs, with the hips. If you bring your knee inwards to the midline to then open it outwards, it's much softer on the joint. And it can, um, I believe there's something called the rotator cuff um, at the shoulder. So that if you bring your arm straight up, which looks lovely, it can cause a problem depending on some people, how their shoulders are set. Whereas if you bring the elbow in to the centre and just rotate it round to bring it out, it's a softer movement. Come onto your hands and knees into cat cam. And we're going to do this several times. Hands are shoulder width apart, knees are hip width apart. Breathing in, dipping the back, looking either up or along the mat. Breathing out, rounding the back, the chin comes to the chest. Really press your hands down to arch the back. Breathing in. We're going to do this several times to your own breath pattern as you round. It's warming the spine, it's getting movement through the vertebra, but because you're on your hands and knees, it's very safe. There's minimal disruption along the spine if you're stiff anywhere. The change of the seasons always heralds um, change that reflects quite often in the joints, the stiffness. 
You'd think that going into spring would be very joyful, and it is, but there is a lot of detoxing going on. And then when we go backwards in the weather, it can be quite detrimental because the body's been used to one thing that suddenly gets plummeted, plunged back. And And then come to neutral. Turn your right palm upwards. It's going to be threading the needle and thread the upturned right palm behind your left palm and come onto your right shoulder and the right side of your head. Bottom up in the air. How much will come onto your shoulders? Up to you. You can stay here. You can, these are all options. You can move your right, left hand slightly forward. Or you can and or you can stretch your left foot back. So tucking the left toes under, extending the left leg, it's a way of stretching out the left leg and stretching under the left toes. And then releasing the left knee back down to the ground if you've done that. Pressing the left hand down to support your weight as you come upwards and then bring your right hand back to where it was. Just cat cow again. Come back to neutral and this time slide your upturned left palm underneath your, behind your right arm, coming onto your left shoulder and the left side of the head, looking to the right. And you can stay here for the option is to extend your right leg, tucking the right toes under and stretching out the right leg. So in and an out breath. And then bending the right knee, tummy in, press your right hand down to come up. Once more, come to cat and cow. And then tuck your toes under. This again is optional. And come to bring your weight as you kneel up onto your outstretched toes. So you're almost kneeling. Now that is really strong. So if you keep your hands on the mat, it's going to support your weight and not be agony. So just go to stretch your toes, keeping your hands either on the mat or up on your knees, depending on how what much you want to stretch your toes out. And why would you do that to expand the lungs? We're coming in, I think, to pre-hay fever season, if you, anyone suffers. And so opening the lungs is quite helpful. But I'm not going to talk to you, just bring your hands back down onto the mat. And then big toes together and Come forward into a wild, like wide legged child's pose. Your elbows can be on the mat or your elbows can be off. And your head is towards the floor. You're stretching out your lower back here. If your knees are dodgy, then you can come up onto your knees, bottom slightly up in the air. And then slowly walk your hands back to come to tabletop. Once more, cat as you dip your back. And this time as you round, chin to chest, cat, tuck your toes under. And we're then to come into our first downward dog. You can have the feet apart bending your knees, or you can walk the dog by bending one knee and then the other. I was going through some yogic texts yesterday and it reminded me that downward dog is a complete body workout. So to enhance that body workout, tummy in and engage your perineum just to engage your core. And then both feet stretch and walk your hands, walk your feet to your hands, your hands to your feet. 
and come for a moment into a forward bend. You can soften your knees, let your head drop, just slightly move it from side to side and up and down just to check that you're not carrying tension in your neck. And then pressing your feet down as you roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And lift and roll your shoulders. Breathing in, and as you breathe out, bring the hands together. Breathing in, hands up however you want to go, circumvent them up, however works for you, stretching up. And then palms together as you bring the hands through the centre, bending the knees, bending the elbows, and touching the fingertips to the ground. You can also touch your fingertips to your shins. Breathing in, flat back. Breathing out, soften your knees, press your feet into the ground, and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. Carry on to raise the hands, circling them upwards, touching the palms. Bring your hands through the center. Bend your knees, bend your elbows, and roll down to touch your hands once more, either onto the floor or onto your shins. Flat back, breathing out, soften your knees, press your feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. And then as we do the next one, I'm going to come to the top of my mat, circling your arms up, touching the palms. Bring them through the center, bend your knees. And this time, step your right foot back. Keep your right leg high for a nanosecond before you bring your right knee to the ground. And then kneel up. So in kneeling up, you can have your right toes tucked underneath or flat. You can have your left foot out to the edge of the mat wall to balance you. You can walk your hands up your left shin to come to upward kneeling. And breathing in, raising the hands upwards. Stretch the fingers up. Look straight ahead. And then come to cactus arms, opening the shoulders. Breathing in, hands upwards. Breathing out, cactus arms. And then bring your bottom back. You might want to move your left foot forward. Left toes up. It's a stretch along the back of the left leg. You can bring your fingertips to the floor. And your bottom goes back just enough to allow you to stretch out that left leg. And then just bring your left leg back in again. And keep your right hand on the floor. Perhaps just adjust it to be alongside the inside of your left foot. And then your left hand can rest on your waist, your left waist. And just turn to the left. Chin slightly in to make sure that the uh, neck is long. If you particularly enjoy raising your left arm and you've got no shoulder compromise, then please do let raise your left arm. Otherwise, keep your left arm on your waist. Hands either side of your left foot and feel before we come up that you can stretch out your left hip by coming forward over your left knee over a 90 degree angle, just to stretch into that left hip. But to come out of this, bring your left knee back to a 90 degree angle so that the support is there in your left leg. Tuck your right toes underneath, tummy in. Lift up your right leg and step your right foot to your left foot. And then the hands either on the floor as you come into a flat back or on your shins. Breathing out, bend your knees. So press your feet into the ground and roll up vertebra by vertebra to standing. 
and then circle your arms upwards, palms touch, come through the centre, bend your knees, and then this time um, step your left leg back, left leg stays high for a nanosecond before you bend your left knee back onto the ground, and then you can just move your right foot out to the right. Your left toes can be either tucked underneath for stability or flat on the ground. And then use your hands to support you as you kneel up. Your right leg can be slightly out to the right. And then hands up. So it becomes half moon pose, stretching your hands out. And then bring them to cactus arms. And then again, hands up. Stretch the fingers up, and then cactus arms, elbows out to the side. And then as you want some more hands up, this time, breathing out, bring your hands to either side of your front right foot, and just slide your right foot out, toes up to the ceiling, extending the right heel so that you're in um, a forward right leg sciatica stretch. And then very gently come to slide your right leg back, keeping your left hand to the inside of your right foot turning to the right, placing your right hand on your right waist to start with and coming into a side rotation. And then you can, if you want to, um, carry on to lift your right arm up. But if that's too much for your shoulder, then just keep your right hand on the waist to open you up at the shoulder. And then very gently come to place both hands either side of the right foot. And then you can stretch out your right hip by letting your right knee drift beyond the 90 degrees, stretching out your right hip. And then this time, slide your right foot back so that you're kneeling. And then walk your hands forward to lift the back feet off the ground. So you're almost in a, like an up dog, but your feet lift the ground, leave the ground. Just take an in and an out breath here. And then lower your feet to the ground and come to lie on your tummy. Hands go straight out in front of you, really stretching out on the floor. It's almost like um, you're standing upright with your arms above you, but on the floor. And then slide your hands back to your chest, your elbows come in. Press your feet into the ground to lift your knees off. Press your hands into the ground and then just slightly almost like a millimetre, come slightly forward. It's a mini cobra. And then knees to the ground. Press your hands down to come back to kneeling. And then we're going to come into a puppy pose. So bottom up high, elbows on the ground. Head can be on the ground or off it. Just adjust your elbows as you feel that there's a stretch in your upper back. That for me, that means walking my elbows out slightly away from me. And just take an in and an out breath here. It's getting into that space between the shoulders, which is quite difficult to do. And then very gently come out, walking your hands back. and then just sway your bottom from side to side. 
And with your bottom going to the right, just explore turning your head to the right and then keeping the bottom to the right, explore turning your head to the left, almost like a fish movement. And then bottom goes to the left, explore turning your head over your right shoulder and explore turning your head to the left. And then just sway from side to side, moving your head how you feel. There's no prescription here, just think of a fish moving. If you're looking down on top of a fish, how it swirls its body from side to side like a snake. So it's a slightly different way of opening up your back. And then very gently come to center and then come to sitting on your bottom, stretching your legs out in front of you. Lift the flesh out from under your bottom, hands either side of you. And we're going to repeat that eight, moving the right foot and tracing a figure of eight in one direction with your big toes and your, your, your feet. So almost with your big toe, trace a, a big toe and big toe joint, trace a figure of eight in one direction. And notice the bits where your um, ankle might skip part of that circle. And then reverse the circle so reverse your eight. If you go wrong, it doesn't matter. And then come to stillness and just stretch your toes of your right foot out and just release and relax them. And then transfer your attention to the left foot. Again, with your big toe and your joint, make a figure of eight in one direction. movement of the figure of eight and that curling in is kind of represented all over nature and I quite like that for its, its fluidity of movement. But that furling, there's no jagged edge, it's just a smooth circle and then reverse your eight, which I've instantly forgotten, I've had a mal, malfunction on a brain function here, I just can't think what I'm doing. So that's interesting. Because our movement is dictated by our brain our brains really. So obviously mine's faltering slightly here. And then just stretch your toes out and then just release. Bounce your knees and then just rub your legs, massage them or pat them. And now cross your right ankle over your left. Even though you're not doing very much, the crossover of the ankles, for instance, or the hands at the wrists, reflects in the brain uh, the message that there's been a crossover. And so it invites the brain to rethink its, or it encourages neural pathways, which I've been understood, or I've been led to believe. So your right foot is over your left ankle, your left hand goes to the outside of your right thigh and your right hand goes behind. As you breathe in, lengthen your body and breathe out, turn to look over your right shoulder. And stay here for a couple of breaths. The focus is not how far you can get to the right or look over your right shoulder. The focus is the turn and wherever you end up is absolutely fine. It's a journey that's important. And then very gently come back to the centre. Uncross your legs and just slide your hands forward slightly onto your shins. Breathing in and breathing out.
and then slide your hands up again and cross your left ankle over your right. Just as you breathe in, maybe touch your fingers to the floor just to lengthen your spine and then taking your right hand to the outside of your left thigh, left hand behind you, breathing in, lengthen your body and then breathing out, turn to the left. Again, the head in a turn is the last thing that turns and it's not how far you turn, it's just the rotation. So I know this is a weird thing to think of, but when you turn and you rotate, the muscles along the length of the spine get lengthened to one side and then the other. And then that gives you more space all along, in a way, the intercostal muscles. We've looked at the intercostal muscles separately, but it enhances everything, gives you more space in your torso. So that enhances not just your breathing, but everything in your organ flow, blood flow, because everything has space to operate properly. And then come back, uncross your left ankle, and just slide your hands forward. And here you can come forward in a classic forward bend, or you can hold your big toes and slightly slide your legs apart in a, an open, your, your legs are in a V, the forward bend, but again, the choice is yours. Your thumb would hold your top toe fingernail, big toe fingernail, just breathing in and out. So again, you can sense here that your back is extended, well, it's, it's rounded forward, but it's, to be technically correct, it's, it's in a forward bend, but the space between the vertebra is increased. And a forward bend is always calming for the nervous system. And then tummy in as you slide your hands up, bend your knees, and just hold your knees, your legs underneath your thighs and just explore your cores to pick your toes off the ground. And try and keep your back straight, which will mean that your core comes in more. And then just place your feet on the ground and come forward slightly, hugging your shins. And then come to lying on the floor, knees bent and feet a hip width apart. Your hands can be either palms down alongside you on your abdomen or out slightly to the side. Go to where you're comfortable. And just start by swaying both knees from side to side. You can lift your hips off the ground. You can make your feet slightly wider than hip width apart. As the knees sway from side to side, you can in, involve your head, turning that from side to side. And I'm not going to give any instruction this time. Turn your head to whichever direction you feel naturally drawn to. The head might go with the same direction as the knees or in the opposite direction, away from the knees, but it's your choice. You can really lift your hips up and have your knees almost to the floor. You can stay for a breath. Or you can move gently from side to side, massaging across the top of your bottom and on the sacral lower part of the most of the Your spine at the very base. And then come to the centre. Just bring your heels in slightly and your feet perhaps more to the hip width apart. 
and your hands, wherever they were, just bring them palms down alongside you for a couple of pelvic tilts. Just rolling up and down the spine. And then just very gently come to stillness. Lift and hug your right, left knee in towards you. Just circle your left knee a few times in one direction. And then circle your left knee a few times in the other direction. Place your left ankle on top of your right leg and open your left knee out to the left. Your hands can be resting on your abdomen or palms down alongside you. And just sway both knees gently from side to side. And then fully cross over your left knee, over your right, and just sway both knees to the left. Your hands can stay where they are, or you might like to raise your right arm bent at the elbow, the back of the right hand on the floor. That's quite strong, but it's quite opening as well. But come back if that's too much for you. Just take an in and an out breath. Tummy in to bring both legs upright and uncross your left leg. Lower your right arm and just sway both knees from side to side. Hug your right knee into your chest. And just circle your right knee a couple of times in one direction. And then circle your right knee a couple of times in the other direction. Open your right knee out to the right by placing your right ankle on top of your left leg. Your hands are either palms down along the floor or resting on your abdomen as you sway both knees from side to side, massaging along the top of your bottom. And then bring your knees to the center and fully cross your right leg over your left. And then just gently let both knees drop to the right. And your left hand can stay where it is or bend at the elbow and just rest the back of the left hand up to the, corner, the diagonal at the top corner of the mat. Your head can look up or turn to the left, eyes open or closed. And again, it's quite a strong stretch onto the left arm, so if that's too much, then modify, and, and the option would be to hold perhaps your left waist or just bring your left arm down. And then very gently engage your uh, lower abdomen and perineum to bring both knees up right and lower your left arm, unravel, uncross your right leg from your left and once more just sway both knees from side to side. Hug your left knee into your chest and then hug your right knee into your chest. And Sway gently from side to side. 
then hug both knees into the chest. Still holding both knees, let both knees drift away to arm's length. Hug both knees into the chest. And then let both knees drift away to arm's length. Both knees into the chest and both knees away to arm's length. Both knees into the chest and both arms away to arm, uh, knees away to arm's length. And again, a couple more times in your own breath. And then very gently place one foot on the ground and then place the other foot on the ground. Bring your feet wide to the edge of the mat and just bring your knees to softly touch. Placing your hands on your abdomen and the elbows slightly out to the side. Just connect into your neck and head by rolling your head gently from one side to the other, supported by the mat. Just check that your neck is, um, when I say long, it's not creased up and your chin's not up, but your neck is extended slightly. And just where you are, raise your eyes upwards slightly. And then just release and relax, gently closing your eyes. And bring your attention to the nose, the entrance of the nostrils. And as you breathe in, just notice the breath is slightly cooler as it comes in. And breathing out, just notice that it's slightly warmer. And again, as you breathe in and out, noticing the cool and warmth, expand your awareness to notice where the breath comes in. Is it the centre of the nostrils? Is it along the inside edge or the outside? That all reflects um, a sort of uh, Ayurvedic or Chinese health practitioner, for that matter, would be able to tell you about your health from how the breath comes in, the part of the view that's activated, it all connects through to the brain. It's a fascinating science, but just be aware, there's no right or wrong, just be aware of where your breath is coming in and out. Um, as you take your next breath in, imagine drawing in a fine, almost translucent air, so bringing it to a point in the centre of your head that you imagine to be the centre. And breathing out, just let all the breath travel down inside your body from the head all the way through to the toes and through leaving the body through the feet, taking with it anything you don't want. And bring your focus back once more to the nostrils as you breathe in, to a point in the centre of the head, that fine veil of translucent air and as you breathe out, let the air travel all the way down, taking with it anything you don't want today. Any niggles or pains or thoughts you don't want, put them in to that outward breath, leaving through the soles of the feet. And now choose a colour, any colour, as you breathe in that translucent coloured air this time, to a point in the centre of the head. And breathing out, let the air travel down through the body, that translucent coloured air leaving through the soles of the feet. And once more, bringing your attention to the nostrils, breathing in your coloured translucent air, swirling it inside and now outside, cocooning you. And then just breathe out once more, for the final time, 
letting everything travel down through, through the feet. And then staying here on the mat. Just once more bring your attention to the ends of the nostrils in and out. And take a moment to have a thought for the day. It can be wishing yourself or anybody close to you a well, good day ahead. Have the thought a couple of times to set your intention. And now let that thought go. And you can either stay here, just relaxing on the mat to end the class, taking a mental bow for yourself to have a very lovely day ahead. Or you can hug your knees into the chest and taking your time to come gently to a seated position. Again, do whatever feels right for you. But wherever you are, take once more and mentally bow for yourself to say thank you very much for joining me today and have a lovely day ahead. Thank you.